After two seasons at Baylor in women's tennis, Anita Saeva with the UTR 10.0 of Ukraine is transferring and has verbally committed to LSU for the fall of 2023 following her visit. She played at two and three singles and number two doubles this past year with overall records of 30 and 24 in singles and 28 and 21 in doubles. But I will say this, she needs to work on her mental game and her attitude. I've seen it in person. I've seen it. And she's had point penalty issues in the past. And she's even defaulted a few matches this past year. Yeah. Not good. And I'm pretty sure the Baylor coaching staff told her, you're not going to come back. Anyway, I mean, because of that alone. Now, I know LSU did pick up Florentine Decker as a former core one from Kansas State. So that definitely helps. And I do know that they do have three recruits, other recruits coming in. So five in total for LSU. But two of those are three stars. They're not going to have to play. So in terms of their roster, and LSU last year made the NCAA tournament, but barely. And they had the following record. Thirteen and eleven overall, five in the eight, eight in the SEC, which is a tough conference with Georgia and Texas A&M this past year. And they did lose in in the first round of the NCAA tournament to Wisconsin four one. So that's just saying that. And for LSU side of things on the recruiting, I mean like potential roster. I know they already lost. Komar to the transfer portal and they also lose Carrington and as well and maybe there's two other seniors as well so that one two three four five players are gone potentially now if the other I know Carrington's definitely gone no matter what and Giesler and Kubit could be coming back but I'm not sure so assuming that those are that's the case they're all gone one two three four five six seven because eight because let me check this again real fast I apologize they only return four players at the very worst but they bring in four, I mean five, because they brought Florentine Deckers in. That definitely helps. As well as they do bring in a few, like a one five star and two three stars, but those three stars are not going to get to play. Let's be clear about that. So, five players. So, one, two, three, four. nine players in total and a few of them are going to be walk-on types so we'll have to see if they add any more because they might have another scholarship potentially they do and we'll have to see how they improve from last year if any and that was a first year staff as well and Florentine Deckers is a good player but I will say this about Anita like I said before she has to work on a mental game she has defeated in the past some top 700 players in the world but in singles but at the same time she could lose to anybody and she's really into her head too much as a player and Baylor this past year was 17 and 14 overall and 3 and 6 in the Big 12 one of the worst they had in a, in a bet but they made it to the round of 32 somehow I mean with a 4-0 loss to Texas A&M, that was very deceiving. But the Big 12 was also tough with Texas, Oklahoma, Iowa State, and Oklahoma State were the top four teams, and they were all in the top 18 in the country. Against Oklahoma State, they only lost 4-3 at home. Technically clinched at 4-2, but either way, if that match would have been reversed, that could have helped their standings. And yes, they lost 4-3 to Texas Tech, but most of those win singles wins were in 10-point tiebreakers. You can't have that. I mean, 
and they did lose four three to Kansas as well. So that's just saying some things. But this was expected for Baylor to have her gone because let's be clear, Baylor brought in three players. I mean, two freshmen and two Susanna's Kubucha, Kubucha and Frekowiska. But I'm gonna. But I'm going to definitely double check on a. And I apologize if I burped that last name. And the last name is like F R A N K O W S K A. So. Yeah. I also think this team last year kind of got affected by her attitude too. Not, and not to say it's just solely on one player. I'm just saying her attitude was bad for the team and. You can't have players with bad attitudes, even if they're capable. And hopefully, the LSU coach could get that out of her because she needs to fix that. I believe Baylor only has one scholarship remaining, if any, because I would assume the following players on a scholarship, like Lou Buck. Lubo Kaskinko, for example, Elizabeth Harson, Daniel Dimitrov, Daniel Tudin, Brooke Thompson, and possibly he's on scholarship. The same thing goes for Lauren. But I'm going to double check that. Because remember, in women's college tennis, there's only eight scholarships. So, Daniel Dimitrov, I would assume, is on scholarship. Same thing goes for Tudin. Luba uh, Koskenko. Isabel Harson, And then, out of those three. So, one. Two. Three. Four. Seven. There's a possibility that they're, they already used up their scholarships. There's a possibility. If not, they're going to add a player. It, don't be shocked if they add a player, if they have a scholarship remaining, if if they even have one. So, and I know next year should be a little bit easier in a bit, not like a ton easier in a Big 12, but I think Oklahoma is going to take a step backwards, first of all. They're not going to be the same team as the last two years because they lost four seniors now, and all of them, were key contributors, and yes, I know Ivana Corley from Oklahoma only played doubles for mostly last year, but it's the truth when you think about it. But oh, forget Texas and Oklahoma State. You're not going to compete for the top two spots. Those two are the top two, in my opinion. I think Kansas is going to take a step back. Obviously, Iowa State's going to take a step back with the new head coach and uh, their roster turnover, and I know they're building a new facility for to expand their courts indoors to six courts and give them more like a, like an outdoor facility as well so and with the additions of Cincinnati BYU UCF and Houston and I expect UCF to be the best of the bunch but even then I don't know if Baylor is going to really lose to UCF I mean that's the truth so there I think they could improve but they have they have to work on their game, and at least Anita is not going to be in the Big 12. I'm thanking God for that. Because Alina Shlebina is in the Big 12 just for one more year. And granted, we might play Alina Shlebina her senior year as a non-conference match against Oklahoma. And same thing goes for Anita down the line for the next two years, potentially as a non-conference or NCAA tournament match. And I forgot about that for Oklahoma as well. In two years, when Alina is a senior, so yeah, that's the thing. This was expected. Don't be, don't be crying about this, Baylor fans. It's all good because I actually heard from somebody that she told that person, "I'm leaving Baylor." Yeah, this was expected, so. Anyways, if you like this content, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Final scores, we're on the road to it. Let's go. And we have to wait and see what happens in the off season too. And I, 
I do think Baylor's going to improve, and I think West Virginia's going to be where they're at. Maybe TCU gets a little bit better, but I don't know how much. I mean, so there's bound to be improvements, and we don't have to. We don't know the schedule or anything for both these teams going forward. So 